You can't afford to keep getting into battles like this and you all know it. As you clean your eyes, you notice the ravens kicking the crap out of something which turns out to be Ditch. Between bloodied coughs, he's forced to keep his mouth shut for a while and that seems to make everyone a little happy. Seriously? <laughs> okay. Can we make it? Across colorful cliffs is by countless pockets carved into stone. Those those are sculptors' homes, Alfin points out. The massive web of stairs and chambers have been a beehive of activity before the dread fled from this darkness. Don't move, Alfin says, pressing your back to the stone. The ravens do the same. Beyond the monolith floats an immense creature, all tentacles and eyes swimming in the air. What in the depths is that? Whisper. A victim, Alfin says accusingly, aimed at the Valka. You've heard of enormous monster crawling from deep within the earth, but this one has been twisted horrifically, horrifically by the, dar the darkness. Ravens worry that the light will draw its attention, even from this distance. Hide within the dread dwelling, I guess. The thing meanders and to and through, something, sometimes bumping and sliding into walls. After long observation, you believe that its many eyes have been made useless. The caravan then leaves with haste, and you feel a twinge of pity for the mangled thing. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Caravan enters a field of tall grass, or as Erin tells you something more akin to seaweed. You wouldn't call it that anymore. The grass blades are new, now ebony razor edge corkscrews that bite at your skin, pulled waist high and gone as far as the eye can see. They break easily though, Valgrad says, shattering a cluster of a loud smack from his shield. Yeah, and the sound will bring everything that isn't already looking our direction, while slowly rubbing a stinging cut on his arm. We've got a long way to go. So let's come to get to some agreement here. Um, <laughs> move carefully. We can't. Yeah, we need to move quickly. On the one hand, you're able to avoid drawing attention of being covered in wounds. On the other, the going is slow. And by the time the grass finally thins out, you wonder how much time you've lost. <gasps> what? Two days! The ground begins to crinkle softly beneath your feet. But let's notice it too. Juno hums a soft lullaby and a nebula of light drift from her stuff like comfort and birds, reflecting off a plane of tinted glass that spills out ahead in every direction. Nice, says Awin. For it once was, I can be sure what the darkness has done to it. Like the jagged shale you've tampered so far. Plays in geometric patterns or flat planes, some hanging curiously in the some hanging curiously in the air, Valgar there's a short slide onto the thing. I'm solid enough. Mm, spread out in a single file and push into the eyes. One good mistake, deserve another, the matter's only. One! replies Spar sliding in onto the eyes. It withstands their wave as well as their skepticism. Step lightly, the ice may hold, but let's test it. I... It was an ocean, surely there are many things still there. Some bigger than others. 
And maybe we should wait. Why no one chopped its head off when they had the chance? And they had a chance. Luna grips her stuff tightly, hands trembling. You've never seen that. She speaks low, over her shoulder, but you hear it's clear as a bell. No matter what happens now, like the A-Wind. How am I supposed to protect A-Wind from that? Any way you can. The serpent speaks. You don't understand its words, but you get the tone. Juno shouts back, and you understand her perfectly well. You failed, you failed again and again, you won't succeed this time. Serpent mirrors up as it responds, until only wildly coiling loops of ragged monstrous scales can be seen in the light. It means to shut the eyes, go! The serpent strikes like a whip, snapping up Juno between his jaws and slams its head into the eyes widely unconcerned for itself. Juno somehow weaves patterns with broken arms, the eyes beneath your backs. Slowly it occurs to you that Juno has taken control of something deep beneath your feet and is approaching fast. Go! She screams once more. A wind freezes, you, you throw him over your shoulder and run, just as the eye groans and splinters from another impact, snapping like bird traps, ravens scuttling terror. Gosh, they hush. I can see them thing. Just keep going. Is everyone here? You shout. Ravens wrap suit from their faces and cuff into their hands. Big black dust haunts the air, picked up by the Leviathan's trashing. I can see her! Awin shouts. A, a globe of light detaches from the convulsing silhouette of the serpent, blazing through the air and crashing like a meteor. Far in the distance, Awin darts ahead and his, with his own light doors fall. You crawl through curtains of dust. It's suddenly dark as a moonless night. Juno's light dims and wings out. Hurry! shouts A Wind. Soon you admit it's impossible to know if you're heading the right direction anymore. A Wind begins to panic. Keep heading your current direction. The entity passes. More? Could it be days? Uh, you've no idea or even what direction you're heading anymore. You tread over identical flat earth. You're not going to find her just while you're wandering around. You can see to an exhausted crew. Soon you admit it's Impossible to know if you're heading the right direction. We totally come back and forth. You sweep the area, leaving markings as guideposts. It's frustratingly slow. Old Ollie puffs after a long silence. Shapes ahead shamble towards you. Of course. I don't need you though. To get out of the way. And they can pull there. Yeah, like from past. Uh, you though. I can level you. I can level you. Uh, this. Oh, not really. Maybe oh, I can give you this. 
and then we'll swap that for this. And I'll give you that, which was yep, this one. Yeah, I think enough. Hopefully, we have enough. I doubt we have enough. I see something. I think we found her. We're not the only ones. Two of you. Wait. Where's Kiwi? Oh. oh, damn. Okay, here we go. A second. They move before Kramr does. He goes first, so okay. this, this. Okay! I think! Moves first, that thing moves first. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> oh, this free. Oh, the uh, body flare. Guys, next. Uh, if I want you to get hurt too much, and I can't give an armor. Damn, you are amazing. Actually, was impressive. Yeah, and there it goes. Is dead. He is definitely dead. I can not do anything. Let's go for the ten best. And he's done. <laughs> or not. This guy is next. Good hit both of them. Whoa. I didn't see that coming. Better if they just do something. Is 
attachment. He wasn't touched, so how far can it go? It can't run after her. Yeah, even though she's dead anyway. I think we will be able to finish them. Could have stood there. Oh, yeah. yeah she's there. Real close, though. Not done. Okay, I screwed up. Yeah. I noticed that after I've done it, so. No, oh god damn it. We are so oh no, we have key. Um I guess we have you you Right, I don't know. <laughs> Take the guy. Oh, that's okay. Who starts? He starts. You could have used some health. So I keep uh, ignoring this, this turn counter. Of course. Bastard. I'll hit you. Relax, right? Closer. Got best damage of ten. Help him. It's dead. We <coughs> can move out. Something. <laughs> I can't hit him. I like this. And it's enough. It's plenty enough that he gets his arm. Oh, there's 
so slow. At least you dealt free damage. So we'll start here. I have no idea what's going on. This is so anticlimactic when you always when he misses the most crucial uh, the most crucial moment. For some reason it is so strong. Let's keep resting. Just in time. <laughs> I want to flee. I can't push it anymore. I would love to, but we can't. Just can't. Wait, I, I need to promote all of them. We find Juno's body lying out on the ice. She is mangled, very recognizable, grotesque. No coming back from that. The serpent at the fall didn't kill her. Slagged it. Not to mention she's just been laying out in the darkness. Who knows how long. This is the end, isn't it? We fail. What do we do? We finish what we came to do. This is not the end. Owen's face and voice are expressionless. A tear streak his cheeks. We take her to the White Tower. Ivor, please pick her up. It doesn't sound like a request. Damn it! They've left her there! Ravens swear they see figures looking from the corners of their eyes and hear the whispers of dead family members. Some accuse the corpse of Juno, others are the ominous pillars that have been rising on the horizon. The dread godstone, Eowyn tells them, rises like a thief from the hungered wolf's mouth. Its bar sings, its walls, brave men, and the bright dawn star. An old song from before the gods died, fitting, ambling through the tall, through the tall pillars like thief. An obsidian forest, reading, reading uh, the great black godstone. If my dead mother appears, I'm ending things here and now. Holy snarls. Anchored 
everyone to tough up. Unless your actual mothers and sisters start fasting spears at us, keep your delusions to yourself, you threaten. Just don't take it kindly, but get your meat. Ah! Only three days left, god damn it. I don't think we'll make it on time. And we need to rest. At least once. We push on. Despite hope being lost, along with Juno, to something black and heavy ahead. Did the dredge build godstones of their own? They did, and hope is not lost yet, Ivor. You jerk into her as Juno's voice in your head, and her hand lightly squeezing your shoulder. She breathes softly. Well done, you put me down. Nerves get the best of even the bravest. Not another step, shouts Oli. He pushes his way to Juno. You died. Not another step till you spill it. All of it. The chorus of voices concur, echoing of the pillars themselves. Bruno sucks upon her staff. She looks at A Wind, but his stare is leagues from here. All will be well, she starts, but drags back from Uli's axe blade at her neck. No more magic tricks, he hisses. Answer. You're right. It's time you all knew. This will be more easily shown than told. The Valka were the first to discover a world within our world. The inner earth, with its own lands, people, and sun. A source of power far greater than our own. Ivan is the boss. The leader of the Valka, brilliant, born with a mind devouring itself. I studied in secret to heal those wounds, and in time, we grew to love each other. But meddling with minds is forbidden, for reasons already clear to you. The Council sentenced me to death. They agreed to spare Ivan the same fate. I went willingly. So I did. When Ivan discovered what had happened, he carried my body to the White Tower. In his grief, he drained the Black Sun of its energy, hoping to restore my life. The sun fell from the sky, ripping chasms through both worlds. The serpents slithered out from its shattered egg, half-born, and the darkness within spread. I had become the new vessel for its power. When we reach the White Tower, and Ivan releases my energy, the sun will move again, and the darkness will return to where it belongs. As Juno releases her grip over the caravan, the image fades. Eowyn carried me all the way back to the Red Horn before he could go no further. That's where Haken's world found us. He understandably believed I was dead and left me there. Eowyn lived still, if only barely. By the time he awoke, the Varl had taken him most of the way to Einar Tuft. When I'm where. <laughs> When I realized what had happened, I traveled by ship down the river to meet Eowyn at Sigurdholm, but the serpent's chasms prevented this. I believe you know the rest. I'm certain you have many questions, I will answer them clearly. This goes back all the way to the time of the gods. It's gonna become long and complicated, I'll keep it simple. The little mother first discovered weaving and with it created this world and those living on it. The other beings in the tapestry, other gods, reacted in many different ways. 
Some wanted to learn weaving and they took the creations she made and changed them, forming Varl and Horseball. One god became jealous, he took mankind, or shaped them into dredge, and hid them within the world to grow and torment creations. When the Loom Mother learned of this, she became furious. As she had discovered creation, she had also unwittingly created death and accidentally killed Joe's god in anger. The other gods were dead. They had never imagined not existing. They turned on each other out of fear. The gods died, but the creations continued on. The Valka were the Loom Mother's favorite few. We taught them weaving. Eowyn and I are descendants of those first people. What does the serpent have to do with any of this? I'll admit, even I was uncertain on the incident. But the easiest way to understand it is to imagine an egg. The serpent's egg was made inside it, this inner earth, black sun mirroring our own. Within it, a serpent would grow slowly over the ages. It was put here to eventually swallow the, swallow the Loom Mother's creations. A cruel trick to destroy them in secret. When the black sun fell to the earth, it cracked. The serpent and its power spilled out well before its time. Everything happened now is because of pe grudges between the gods. In a way, Erwin unwittingly did all of us all a favor if the serpent had grown to full size. Well, at least as things are now, there may be a chance to reverse it. I am not exactly bursting with gratitude at the moment. Understandable. If the dread were told by the Valka, why are they attacking me? The stone singers believe we have betrayed them. Early on, we discovered that the Black Sun was a far greater source of power than our own. After the wars of the Great Wars, everyone believed the Valka utterly defeated the Dredge, and truth, we offered them peace. In exchange for use of the Sun's power, we showed them how to flourish within their own lands and create more of their own kind. So you created the stone singers. In a way, we only shared knowledge. It has always been a difficult question to exert, but now they believe we caused this destruction of the gods. They think that we wish to wipe them out, unlike anyone else. We are scared and frenzied, and will not listen. We have failed them as much as we have failed everyone else. I've heard enough. What now? Now we turn to the source of the power. I am not dead, but neither am I alive. This energy within me was stolen. A wind will place me within the black sun, the celestial spheres will circle again, the darkness will be absorbed and without that, the serpent will wither. It suddenly looks very tired. It's a smile. You'll be trapped within the sun. Come to terms with it. And now, uh, make sure A wind knows what is right. An enormous bell hangs from the carved stone work. Even untouched, it hums with a strange, deep resonance. Alfred says, The sculptors build this gods unto themselves. Raise bells made of those who have passed. It's said that a part of them lives in the sound of these bells and they can visit their ancestors this way. Sparkles in arms. That would explain the spooks. The stone singer approaches the godstone, hands up, raking his head in mourning. Seems to di diligently avoid touching anything. At the godstone center, an enormous bell dwarfs the other, smaller chimes hanging throughout. The bell's handle calls to you on a primal level. Are you thinking of ringing it or kissing it? It's for us. I wouldn't do either. Leave the bell. I can hardly think of a worse idea, he replies, stepping away. Curiosity weighs on you for a short while and it separates from the godstone. Okay, but and that's gonna be it for today. No, thank you very much. We have three days left. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!